Uh, this is Julie Sizemore from Creative Cake Supply, and um, if you're doing any kind of holiday baking, candy making, and you, you need help, you're I love stuck. It. I love uh, it. It's my it, favorite time of year. It is. It's fun, and I know your phone's ringing off the hook because a lot of people are looking for you know different things that you can't um, find you know at regular stores. And um, if you're looking for it, chances are Julie has it. Um, how many cookie cutters, by the way? Oh, probably six to seven hundred. Wow, just a few, huh? Yeah, yeah. There's a couple we don't have. Somebody wanted a stapler the other day. Oh my gosh, that's I'm like, funny. Uh, I've never even seen that oh. one. <laughs> but we do have a make your own cookie cutter set. So if there's something you want to make and you're going to be mass producing, sure. it's easier to, than making a template right. know, out of cardboard. Right. So, right. you know, anything is possible. Uh, I suppose. Um, and uh, when a, a lot of people are really good into candy making um, and you have everything you can imagine for um, candy making. And I think that that is such a neat gift idea. It's um, a lot less expensive than going to the mall and buying a bunch of stuff. And it comes from the heart. And I love gifts from the heart. Well, you know? and consumables are nice because, you know, you give you give that gift, it, you know, it gets appreciated, it gets eaten. And a lot of times it's stuff that, that people just don't want to take the time to do themselves. And, you know, some of the high-end, you know, chocolate companies in the area, you know, you go or you go online and buy things. It can cost you 20 30 Thirty dollars a pound mm -hmm. for, you know, some of the the real Kuvacher chocolate. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to talk about is helping you successfully work with either a real chocolate or a uh, confectioner's coating. Now, um, there's a couple different ways okay. of working with uh, a Kuvacher chocolate, and but most importantly, the difference between a confectioner's coating and a real chocolate is cocoa butter. Okay. Cocoa butter is the ingredient. If, if that is on the ingredient list, that is real chocolate. Okay. You have to do a tempering process. Um, and the way you temper chocolate is you warm it to a certain temperature, cool it down a little bit, add a little unmelted chocolate, bring it back up to a certain temperature, and you only have a couple degree window to work with it. Okay. And what can happen is if you don't properly temper chocolate, you can get white streaks. Okay. It won't dry. It'll be uh, real dull looking it's in uh, in a couple days it'll have a white cast sounds to like it's it. very very touchy it you know high-end chocolate it has the most wonderful mouth feel and mm -hmm. just melts on your tongue so beautifully mm -hmm. but there is techniques to working with it so you you cannot take a, a, a bar of real chocolate say a, a Giardelli or a Hershey right. bar and just melt it and start dipping doesn't work it does not, not work. work okay no. so, well, so what for people like me who just want it easy um, um, and this is the solution? These are uh, a confectioner's coating. When okay. What has been done um, to make it easier to work with is the cocoa butter has been replaced by palm kernel oil. Okay. Now there's different grades of coatings, just like there's different grades of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And the lower end coatings are, are not going to melt as nicely, you know, be thicker, be harder to work with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we pride ourselves at Creative Cake Supplies on how we handle our product. It's not going to be stored somewhere where it's going to cause the product to, to dry out. Okay. You know, we get overnight shipping, mm -hmm. so we're very, very Fresh. meticulous okay. about how we handle the product. Okay, so so that's is, key also. And it, it tastes just like chocolate? You're not going to really know the difference? It, uh, you know, high-end, people who are used to high-end chocolates will know the difference, mm -hmm. um, but for most people who just typically eat you know, you know, other candies, right. it, not so much. And so easy to work with. So in it goes, double boiler or microwave? Yeah, now okay. double boiler, you have to be careful because when you, when you, if you don't have a bowl like this that mm -hmm. actually sits on your pan, you can do a double boiler with a pan in a pan, but water is dangerous right. for chocolate. Okay. It, as soon as a drop can get into it, it'll seize it. Okay. And, it, you know, and you want your water to not be touching your pan because right. it's the steam that right. keeps it hot. Right. And you don't need your water to be boiling right. either. So then you just pour your chocolate coating it's already starting to melt. sitting you can there see that. Mm -hmm. and then melt it, you know, keep it stirring to help dissolve it. Fun if, molds. If, wow. Right. If you want to take the pressure of dealing with the water out, you can also take your coating. Put it in a microwave safe dish. Are I, these easier to microwave than regular chocolate? As far as a regular chocolate, you know, it burns so quickly in the microwave and it makes me nervous. Right. right. You okay. want it low and slow okay. is the key. And even if it doesn't look like it's melting, toss it around a little bit, mix it up. That's key. Okay. Now, if you overheat your coating, okay. um, these little flakes, which are called paramount crystals, are actually the fat 
that's in the chocolate. Okay. Uh, and I keep saying chocolate, but I mean coating. Okay. Uh, real chocolate has cocoa butter in it, so that would be the fat. And there is cocoa butter okay. you can buy also. Okay. So if you microwave it low and slow, defrost, minute at a time, it'll get you the same nice fluidness that you need to work with. Okay. And if, if you um, use, say, a, uh, a heating tray mm -hmm. or a warming um, pad, uh, okay. you know, something to keep your chocolate liquid while you're using it, you want to make sure that it's a cooler temperature or use, say, a towel to buffer the higher heat. If it starts to thicken while you're working with it, you know it's getting too warm. Okay. And what's happening is the fat in it is being depleted. Okay. So this, the Paramount crystals, just about a teaspoon, even just a couple flakes can make a huge difference. Good to have on hand, you're right. saying. Okay. Right. Okay. And I always encourage customers, especially if they're not in the area, you know, just always have a bag on hand. Now, chocolate chips, this is a question we get a lot this time of year. Chocolate chips, which are semi-sweet, usually real chocolate, those are meant for baking. So that when you bake at a 350 degree oven, it, and then they cool, they're meant to retain that little shape. Okay. So typically if you see a recipe that calls for you to melt chocolate chips, mm -hmm. you're also adding oil, you're adding f some other fat sure. to it. Right. So, you know, that's not ideal and it, it'll take a lot of fat to get to a nice, thin, workable consistency because you want your chocolate, if you're dipping with it or if you're molding with it, to have a nice, this is thin, perfect. Yeah. right. So the other thing is if your chocolate doesn't, um, isn't heated warm enough, that can also cause you problems. It'll be thick to work with. It will, when you start, say if you're topping off uh, a piece of candy with it that you've put in just a paper cup, it'll have a bunch of squiggles in it, but you won't notice that till it dries. Okay. So you need it also to be warm enough when you're working with it. I understand. All right. Boy, lots of good information here, and uh, you set me straight for sure.